Hi, I'm in Medellin, Colombia with uh, Amber Case here. Hi, Amber. Hi, how are you doing? Um, I haven't uh, planned uh, uh, questions about this interview, but I'm really interested in what you're doing. Uh, can you explain a bit about uh, cyborg anthropology? Sure. Um, cyborg anthropology is the study of the interaction between humans and technology and how technology affects culture. So, for instance, as humans now in modern society, we're all cyborgs because we carry around cell phones with us and they kind of cry and we have to pick them up and we have to feed them with energy. And um, we're basically these superhumans because we can connect to anybody at any time all throughout the world. And that's changed our culture. It's changed geography. It's changed our brains because now we have this uh, technology as an external mind. So that's what I study. Uh, uh, yesterday you said something like that this was a natural consequence of our from the first time we were learning how to use tools, very primitive tools, right? Yeah, that, um, that technology and humanity have evolved side by side for years and years. So cave people had very primitive tools that they built, but now as a complex human society we have complex tools. And really the, the beginning of tools were extending the capability of the fist with a hammer, or the teeth with a knife, or with the automobile, the ability to run very fast to some place. But now the, the new technology is extending our minds, so it's, it's less of a physical extension than a mental extension. And that's the big difference that's happened with the information society, that now it's suddenly mental. And it's, it's very important. It started with books, but now we can get books and information from anywhere, and it's living. So this is, this is the big uh, turning point where society is, is changing even more rapidly, because you can't even see the information, but it's, it's everywhere. So it's, it's very exciting to see. Mm -hmm. It also, it also sounds uh, uh, logical uh, when you... Uh, told about uh, organic cities, uh, and you said you prefer that uh, den denomination instead of uh, digital cities. Uh, how, what would be the difference? So the difference between, say, a digital city and an organic city um, is that if you think of a very good organic organism, the organic uh, creature or ecosystem can heal itself. It can say, okay, there is a virus here, uh, there is something, of, there's a problem here, and it needs to grow in this way. And it has a sort of pattern, and then it can fix itself, right? Mm -hmm. So a city that can identify a crisis or bugs or problems and fix itself is a very powerful city. Um, like uh, a digital city might have errors that they can't fix. So uh, a, an organic city is a better analogy because it can grow and evolve over time. Yeah. Uh, here in the third world uh, and most of Latin American cities uh, we have uh, um, People has no access to technology, to internet connection. Uh, for example, in in my country, uh, internet connection at home is very limited to upper classes of society, and in rural places, it's very difficult to connect. But at the same time, there are a lot of uh, internet cafes. So people go there for an hour or two hours and check he, their emails uh, and whatever they want to do. But uh, I think this would be a, a limitation uh, for our cities to go into digital. Uh, what you, how you see this? I think that um, desktop computers are a limitation. Um, that a desktop computer that you have to plug in, that the idea of having to go to a place to get connectivity, I think that will go away. Uh, I think that the biggest opportunity that developing countries have is the mobile phone. 
because you can have connectivity wherever you are, and as long as um, as long as smartphones become more affordable and the ability to connect anywhere occurs, you can have a smart connection. Mm -hmm. Because everybody has the ability to you know, comment on the city or help build the city or help report information from the city. Um, the desktop computer is kind of an old model. It requires an infrastructure. Um, it's expensive, and you have to you know, wait for a period of time on it. But to have a whole city that's connected by by mobile technology is is actually more more efficient because everybody can just be connected, right? Um, it's a little bit difficult in a, in a rural area, but um, installing cell towers and things like that versus entire power lines and grids um, for, for desktop technologies is, um, is probably a better way to go. Um, and having... It, it's been cheaper um, in countries to, to help sell, sell towers and have mobile technology. So I think it will go mobile where you can do anything that you would have done at the internet cafe, but you can do it on your phone. Yeah. I think that too. Uh, because uh, also the, the infrastructure uh, of our cities is, is, has its weakness when you have a uh, Terrorism, and uh, any kind of that uh, that can do that, that that can make that in a moment we can go offline and have no support on on this. Um, how an organic city uh, would be? Uh, Compared with uh, the ecological movement, uh, would we against that? Uh, they could work together. How do you think? Uh, I think that mobile phones are are smaller. Um, it, like for instance, like we we are all connected in this park, even yeah. though we don't have to sit at, at a computer. Um, but. Uh, the idea of creating spaces where people can go and interact with each other and have some footprint of that um, through writing or text um, is really important. Um, and getting knowledge from a phone, like for instance, I can look up all these different types of plants and trees and learn how to plant them. Or I can figure out like local events that are happening so that I can you know, go and, and contribute to, to a city. So um, I think that they definitely go hand in hand because any technology that's lighter and easier to use and cheaper um, becomes really important in, in figuring out um, you know, new cities. So one of the things that, that people are starting to do is have small sensor technology and that interacts with cell phones and networks and you can start to understand the pollution levels in the city or um, noise levels in the city or um, any of these other uh, metrics that you might want to get from the city from very cheap sensors. Um, and because these aren't big computers that are installed everywhere, it's very agile and very easy to kind of implant these sensors around and see opportunities for growth and community. Um, so the smaller the technology is, and the simpler the technology is, and the better our smartphones are, the more information we can get, the more connected we are. And the more connected we are, the more opportunity there is for, for society. Mm -hmm. Well, um, just to finish this, where we can uh, read more about uh, you and your work? Uh, you can go to cyborganthropology.com, or you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash caseorganic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much.